What's up, YouTube? Let's build a rack. All right, so today, me and Connor are building the Freedom Breeder rack, so let's get to it. Okay, so this is the base of the model. I got the one that has the locking caster wheels. So the locking caster wheels have to be on the front of your rack where the tubs slide out because the locker, the locking mechanisms are only on one side. So we're actually going to lock one and uh, let's start building, bud. Oh, wait, wait. And this stuff. Yeah. So our plug is going to be on that side. This is the back and it's really easy. You just put it on where the Velcro is. Simple. Freedom breeders are so easy to build. So just make sure you put your plugs on the side. You're going to put your power strips. If you look up here, this is the plug that's going to be. So it's going to be on that side of the rack, all the power supply. So I'm building it with all the plugs on that side. I don't need two at a time, but I'll set it down. Okay, line them all up, buddy. Like that. Okay, so this rack is a little custom. For something like this, you have to call Jesse himself and he'll, and then he'll uh, price it out and build it for you. I went with four levels of the FB70s. So this is three tubs wide. It'll be four high and then we'll put the table. It's that easy. So when you're building this, uh, the ventilation, I got 25%. So uh, you want to make sure that's the front. That's where your tubs are going to slide in. So there is a way that I've learned from Brian Cusco. If somebody could do this himself. Did it work? Mm -hmm. All right. And something I did when we offloaded it from the truck is I sprayed all the, the top inserts with chlorhexidine and I will do that to the tubs too. Okay, so quick note on the table. I put mine right after the fourth level because that's the working height I like. When I put a tub on here, you know, you're, you're thinking like this. If you're a little bit taller, I know some people put them after the fifth level. I mean, you can put it anywhere you want in the rack. It's totally up to you. but. I go after the fourth level. So four levels up, table, and then keep building again. All right. This is real easy. Put it there. Put it there. Perfect. Okay, so here's where it changes. So these are uh, 70 series up to the table, four levels, and then from here on out, it'll be the 40 series, which is, I have a whole rack of 40 series already. So I got 12 slots for extra big girls, the BBWs. And something that's great about Freedom Breeder, I mean, this thing's stainless steel, it'll survive an atomic bomb. 
But as you can see, it's just like building Legos, man. If you ever played with Legos, these things are super easy to put together. You just stack them, everything's channeled, everything fits together, super easy. As you can see, me and a nine-year-old kid are building it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something I want to note real quick too, is uh, I get the, the insulation add-on. Uh, I find that it holds the heat and projects it up better. So, And I stay with the stainless steel uh, front clips, Team Stainless Steel. I do is I uh, zip tie these these power strips I get them from Freedom Breeder I get the whole package from Freedom Breeder power strips uh, probe holders thermostat everything I get everything from Freedom Breeder because I mean if you're spending this much money on a professional setup don't skip out on the end and get knockoff stuff so with these you just zip tie them to the back like this and that holds them. And then I'll zip tie another one down here. And that, that easy with these. I mean, they come with mounts where you could screw them to this or screw them to anywhere you want, but I just zip tie them. Don't make any permanent holes in the rack. You can cut these off and put them wherever you want later if you need to change your configuration and switch sides with it for whatever reason. Maybe if you move. that easy all these get plugged into here I get all the cords hanging off I don't want any of the cords sometimes it takes a little bit of tightening up and then this cord will plug into the thermostat. I run the bottom four, everything below the table, on one probe, everything above the table on a separate probe. Okay, so then remember what I said, everything, here's the table level. So starting right here, everything's gonna be plugged in up here. Pretty basic. Get them off the back of the rack. I just go to the closest plug, it doesn't matter. Once this thing is powered up, every, every outlet on here is live, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Got them all plugged in. These are the power cords that will go up to the thermostat. All right, so I also use the Freedom Breeder uh, dual probe, two zone thermostat, whatever you call it. It's the 120 times two. And like I said, if you're going all the way, you might as well get the thermostat holder that Freedom Breeder makes for their racks, for their thermostats. And you wanna put this on the very top level, on the same side as all your plugs, is how I do it. And it just slides right in up here, like that. Easy money. Okay, so I use the probe uh, holders from Freedom Breeder as well. I do a slight little uh, hack that Jimmy Cruz taught me. I put a piece of the fuzzy Velcro between the probe and the probe holder, and it just kind of like, uh, softens the heat and it keeps your heat more constant when your uh, probe isn't directly on the metal. All right, so I put a little piece of Velcro right here, just the fuzzy side of the Velcro, and like I said, that keeps the probe right off, off of direct contact with the metal, and that'll keep a more even uh, temperature so your thermostat's not kicking on and off a million times. So I go uh, one, 
two, three, four levels up from the table for the top probe. And this is just my setup. I'm 11 high, but that, that snaps right into place. So again, I put the little piece of Velcro and I uh, slide the probe in. It is secure. That probe is not coming off anywhere. And I'm gonna have to go, since these are the FB70s down here, I'm gonna have to go in between the tubs, so not directly in the center. I go, not the direct bottom one, I go one up from the bottom, and then that'll power these four lower levels. That's how my other Freedom Breeder rack works. And that was after Jimmy Cruz giving me some uh, tweaks and tips and pro placement and all that stuff, and that got my rack all dialed in over there. So I'm staying with the same on this one. Okay, so this is a very important part. The probe that goes to the bottom, you want to make sure you plug in the power strip on the same side of the thermostat as that probe. So you follow that probe wire up and plug it in here. So the same thing with this top power strip, you follow this, the top power probe, the top probe up here and plug it in. Okay, so pretty important part of these tables is they have these tabs and uh, there's two positions that you can have them. So you can have it stop that far out. I don't go for that far out. I go the second one out, which will make it stop at this point which is plenty of room for the tubs and whatever you need. Gives you more stability. So you can choose whichever way you want, but basically all you do is just bend up these tabs a little bit. So after you bend them up, you just slide them in. And you can finish bending them up. Right there, right there. That stops your table. You're not going to accidentally pull it out too far and drop it on your foot. I want to do this one. And you can always bend those tabs back down and go to the other position if that's what you want to do. It's not that, that crucial. And that is the rack set up. Except for tubs. Alright, so after we put in the tubs, we sprayed every tub down with chlorhexidine. We plugged in the thermostat. Uh, we started it out at 90 degrees each level and then we had to bump it up from there. So what we did was you come in here and you shoot and you know you get like you want to get it to like 89, 90, right in there. So uh, I try to keep about an 88 to 90 degree hot spot so you know it'll even out. So you want to shoot every level all the way up and keep checking on it for a few days without any snakes in it. Uh, one, one side's running 93, the other side's running 94. And that's what gives us our 88 to 90 degree hot spot throughout the whole entire rack. And after you've got it stabilized for a few days, the chlorhexidine's done, dried up, and evaporated. Then you want to throw in some snakes. And uh, even after you throw some snakes in, you kind of want to watch them and see if they're going on the heat. I mean, if they're all slammed to the front of the tub, you're running it too hot, you're measuring something wrong. So like I said, 88 to 90 is what I run. And uh, yeah, so that is our complete Freedom Breeder build. Big shout out to Baby Small Town who helped me do the initial build. Big shout out to Mrs. Small Town who's running the camera. Everyone needs one of these for checking the temps on the hot spots. Until next time, guys, rock on. <laughs>